we can look at um, symptoms or life function or other intermediate endpoints in smaller panels of subjects. And we did that in that study that I just alluded to. Uh, we, we found 269 of those kids who had asthma. Um, and uh, we asked them to keep a daily record of their symptoms and their lung function. This is the diary we asked them to keep. They did this for four weeks. I'm getting buzzed to you. Maybe that's my timekeeper, is it? <laughs> my blow fly. Um, and, uh, and we asked them to record their lung function twice, or twice a day with this device here. And uh, basically, this is just some of the data showing that in terms of daytime symptoms, I won't try to explain all of this, but it does show that there's a significant relationship between daytime symptoms and nitrogen dioxide concentration. So day-to-day -day variation in NO2 concentrations was associated with an increased risk of having wheeze during the day, of having cough at night, um, and, uh, but it wasn't associated with any variation in lung function. So what do we learn from studies about relating um, air pollutant exposure with health outcomes? We, we, learn, we learn whether there is a level of it, whether the level of, of exposure to air pollutants is associated with an adverse health outcome. We can attempt to learn whether or not the association is likely to be causal. So not just that the two things tend to go together, but that it's actually like one is likely to cause the other. And the third thing, which I haven't spoken much about yet, is what's the nature of that relationship? What's the shape or the slope of it? So this is an example of that. This is from a, a slide from the six cities, well, actually from ten cities. They did more cities after that six, initial six city study. But they looked at the relationship between, and I showed you this a little bit with that previous slide. This is just an expansion of that previous slide, showing um, that as the concentration of PM10 goes up, so does the percentage increase in deaths go up. And this goes up in a fairly straight line fashion. This is a straight, you can draw a straight line, and there doesn't seem to be any plateau, either at the bottom or at the top, as far as we can see, within this range. This goes down to about three micrograms per cubic meter. So this would suggest that there is a linear relationship, there is no threshold, there is no step. So much of our regulation of air pollution is based on the principle that you know, there's a level below which you are safe and below which there is no further gain. The importance of this message is that there is something to be gained. It may only be a small gain, but there is something to be gained for every increase every decrease in air pollution, or I mean, it's PM10 in this case, and there's something to be lost from every decrease. There is no sensible threshold point that you can draw through these lines. But the general point, from what, and I'll talk a bit more about that tomorrow, but the general point from this part of the talk is just to say that the information that we want from these sorts of studies is not only whether or not there is a causal relationship, but what is the shape or the nature of that causal relationship. Um, so in summary, just to summarise, how do we test whether a pollutant or a pollutant source is harmful to health? Well, we need a well-defined exposure. We need to know what it is that we're actually interested in, either a specific source or a specific pollutant. We need, vari we need variation in the exposure in time and or in place. We, we need data from a variety of different study designs, toxicological, and observational in humans and if necessary in animals. Uh, we need to consider how many subjects are needed in order to be certain about our results. We need to consider whether there are other confounding factors that, that might explain the apparent relationship. We need to draw inferences about whether the apparent association is causal and we need to know what is the uh, concentration response relationship. So today I've spoken about the first of the three issues on this slide, which was actually, this was the first slide that you didn't see. How do we investigate the association between exposure to air pollutants and health? And tomorrow I'll carry on from this to talk about how are air quality standards set using this sort of information, and how can we approach an air pollution
open source problem. So thanks very much.
tentative treatment in observational studies, and it's very hard to adjust for it. So the, you, you've identified what one of the one of the problems is in studying asthma as an outcome in, in these studies. Thank you.
comment, I can't, I haven't, what would, what would you like me to say about it? Um, is, it a, is it a question that goes with it or? I'm sorry if I didn't try to answer the question. Yes, the question is, do you think the precautionary principle should be applied more readily and vigorously to protect human life and those sort of things compared to the other uh, mechanical and mining principles that are going on at the moment? Because you can't identify all of the problems that you really told us about, should the other side ease back a bit should the precautionary principle apply? Well, I mean, I think the precautionary principle, to be honest, is, is difficult to know how to apply it because it, the question, it, this is all a matter of where you draw a line. And what I'm showing you is effectively a continuous relationship between exposures and outcomes. It is possible to get data and, and it is possible to, and I'll talk to you tomorrow about how you get the data to inform these questions. It is possible to. But what I'm telling you is that there is, a, at least for some of these exposures, there is a continuous level. And there is a whole lot of methods that need to be applied or thought about. And it's ultimately, it's a political decision as to where you draw that line. It's a political and economic, as much as a health and in other decisions to exactly where you draw those lines across exposure. If you, um, you, you know, obviously as a health person, I mean, I, my bias is towards protecting health. But you need, and my bias therefore is to draw those lines down as low as possible. But there are costs associated with that. And those costs uh, often are opportunities for other things that might benefit health. So one has to, these things are a balance. I don't personally find the proportionary principle very helpful in making a decision around those things.